Right? So first we have the cross. Then we have the planets as our guide, guiding lights. Our understandings. Our perspective on things. To elevate our nature to the nature of the gods. For the higher beings. To live more aspiringly. Are we ready for that? Is life faded? Are they just directing it? It's only our matrix. It's a task of thinking that. We don't take the affirmations where they come from. So, against the background of this are the signs of the zodiac. Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Sor Libra Scorpio, Sag, Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces. The higher qualities. The colorings, the light coming down from the heavens. From, from higher, anyways. So here we are this worldly nature struggling to get by. Getting glimpses of light and darkness, new moons, full moons, full moon tonight. Today, it's, it's all part of this sensei. It's a miracle, it's an incredible adventure, it's an incredible matrix that includes all of our matrixes. And yet it can disappear in a second. So, but as you're going that way, there are these higher lights. And it, this, instead of working from day to day, in Bailey, when she talked about it, she talked about living on the clockwise spiral and then having to adjust your life to turn it to a counterclockwise spiral to go on your spiritual path. And they use these terms. But the clockwise spiral, the sun starts at the midheaven, it goes up to the ascendant, to the eastern horizon, it goes up to the, it starts at the icy, the midnight, it goes up to the north, it goes up the highest point in the sky by day, by noon, then, goes, then it sets. And this is the, um, that's the clockwise spiral. Counterclockwise in the southern hemisphere, of course. Of course, spiritual things were written in the north. They really weren't meant for people in the southern hemisphere. It's another perspective. But this, clock, this clockwise side, that's the worldly spiral. So the planets, every day, they move up across the chart. And they move around like that. They come up and down below. They rise up to the top. They, then they get to the bottom. The sun comes up at noon. It goes back down. It goes on and on. That's the dance. But as it's going through the signs of the zodiac, the sun moves through the signs of the zodiac counterclockwise. Moves the other way. And the signs of the zodiac are the qualities in life, the attitudes in life. So the houses or planets are the circumstances you deal with. The signs of attitudes you have to it. The quality that you can aspire to through that attachment to that planet, through your thinking. The way you think, the manner of thinking, but also the way you can see ways of how to detect it. So you can use a horoscope to see how to deal with it. Uh, but you can also see how to take in types. It really represents the roots of your tree anchored into experience. But the root tree is upside down. The roots are up into the heavens, the planets, to our spiritual being. And the leaves are all fluffing around down here. Kind of like which side of a chicken has the most feathers. It's the eternal cosmic koan. The outside has the most feathers. Why worry about the fluff? So, we're poised, everyone. It's true for everyone. But these qualities of these signs, they represent the seasons of year, not the hours of the day. It's a whole different perspective. You're looking around orbital planes of consciousness going around the sun. And you around around the purpose. There's still spirals are still going up, but they represent the shades of there's where you see the colors and the sounds come in. There's a color and a sound for each sign of the zodiac. We're dancing it, we're playing it, we're singing it. And yet no matter how much you sing, or no matter how much you dance, or how much you paint, you can never paint the silence. You can never sing the silence. You have to shut up to do that. Still we'll paint, we'll play, we'll dance. No, but it's life. We have life is here, but it's something else. When you're ready. You're not ready for your heart problem. You're not going to go, okay, I'm ready for God, let's go. Pick me up at seven. It doesn't happen like that. You know, so people don't get enlightened in temples and in mosques or in churches. It's in the middle of a war. It's at the top of a mountain. It's in the desert where you're almost dead. No, like it's not it's enlightenment. You wake up inside of all the storm. 
something's still there. Something else is there. And it's, it, at first, when you're thinking about it, it seems empty. But when you finish, when you stop thinking, you pause for a moment, it's full. Whoa. It's not void. It's full of love. It's full of being. So this, the zodiac, it represents the seasons of the year, the light and darkness changing across the year, and how we all get experienced. But then it also includes the higher zodiac of the constellations and stars. So Alice Bailey wrote a great book called the, uh, her last book, The Labors of Hercules. And Hercules represents the soul of each person. And as the soul comes into life, comes into nature, comes into these attachments, that separate soul coming into life, it has 12 stages, 12 lessons to learn, 12 tests to endure in the process. And these tests, the masters of put in the signs of the light, into the constellations. So even though there's a certain basic level of looking at the light and the darkness around the sun, there are higher frequencies and other messages that have been put in there and teachings that are there that you can touch when you're ready. Usually you read them, you see a story, you think about it, you reflect on it, but these things grow on you over years. They begin to be standing standards that are there. So this process of coming from this separate man, body, woman, life, separate soul, separate sense of soul, and the sense of oneness, or spirit, or radiance, that's a big difference. Do we dare go on that venture? You have no choice but to go on that venture. You're on that adventure. You can't be separate from the adventure. You just hold on to certain levels because you want to have it a little bit more. You know, you, your mom dies and you're mad at your, you're mad at your mom, you didn't have the time, or somebody dies and you didn't have enough time to say, well, how could they leave now? We didn't have enough time, we didn't get a chance to do this, we didn't get a chance to do that. They're getting free and you're mad because they're not fitting into your agenda. We create our own problems. Just from the very first thought. No, like, well, well, in the 60s, when I'm talking about 1965, when people were doing LSD and tune in, turn on, drop out, that's my generation, that's the family, took off and traveled, who cared? You, get, you seem to get enlightened. You, you found an inner world, you take an acid or take a something. Like, it was like, open up something really different. How could this be wrong? This is so incredible. You go out, you go, wow, you follow your sensations out, all of a sudden, you're over, you're, you're sensory overload. And wow, that must be God. Wow. And you hear most people say, consciousness is God, consciousness is life. It's all about consciousness. Really, God, it, it's before you think, before you have that first thought. It's so innocent and simple. You don't have to go out to consciousness and power to see God is there before you even think. Simple. Any kid can do it. We convince us that we're not supposed to. We build up our mental constructs, our psyches, our thing, and we think we're not in control. We think it's been done to us. Mom did it to me. That mom might have been your kid in another lifetime. That lover that walked out on you, you may have walked out on ten times before. How come it's coming back? How come I haven't completed this cycle? How come I'm not in balance? So this rose on the cross, it's really for an astrologer. Here they have a lot more magical seals, but basically they're the elements associated with the signs that are taught about the elements and brought them out. And there's a whole magical theory how you can come into the cross. But from an astrology viewpoint, it's telling you how astrologers work. You meet people stuck in the world of life and misery, and you try and use the planets to help them evolve their nature a little bit. If they can listen, if they can align, maybe they run across higher qualities or higher understandings. And if they can do that, maybe it goes further. And maybe they find the soul steps and the challenges, and they go through the challenges to getting to one, back to one, back to God. Can't, which you can't be separate from, to begin with. Okay, so we could say, so this was just, this is, um, this is a Chinese version of the same thing. We have the, we have the crucifix, and we have the circle around it. Here, they didn't use the square so much in China. They had the Tai Chi, they had the movements, they had the yin and the yang. So you can see the yin and the yang of the dark and the light. And then you can see the, they used the trigrams, these solid and broken lines for each thing. 
to represent the cycle of breathing, of, of coming into life, of going out, of being attached, of letting go, and representing the cycle of life. And they have their mysticism presented in a different way, but it comes off the same source. So these trigrams, which are called trigrams, they relate to the zodiac, and each one fits to the zodiac, and then you're back on the same path of the quality of the energies around you. <laughs> Who's listening? Who cares? I gotta take care of this. I'll, I'll go see that later. No, I don't. I'm too busy. I can't. That's our choices. We can have more problems for our own choices and our own desires, our own loves and hates, attractions and repulsions, and our thoughts about those things. Boy, where is peace? It's not coming from there. But so many imaginative, powerful things do come from there. So, okay. So this is just uh, this showing. This is just integrating <coughs> through the zodiac how the two mysticisms connect. And it's you could put the Kabbalah in here in the same way on the cross. And you can get the Kabbalah, you can see how the two different mystical languages came out. Languages <coughs> about life, consciousness, and you can call them mysteries. But okay, let's change it again. We'll just now, yes, it's another picture of the zodiac, and this is how the I Ching was passed on in its traditional way over the last four or five thousand years. They have the circle of, of the changes, and they have the square of them. <coughs> and they're flat in a certain order, they're all in a specific order. And as the order gets scrambled, like 52 pickup, you throw the cards around, they're going to pick them up. You have your specific orientation. Change. It said these are all neutral. They're all just radiatingly there. They're all pa passively there. They only become significant when they get stirred up. When you change them, when you're born with your son in a certain place, you have a certain theme that's yours. You, you're a certain zodiac sign. You're a certain. You, you get pulled into these things to establish. That's disturbing the wholesomeness. It's just different relative levels of relativity. Okay. Next one. So this is the picture of the initiate, the person who's meditating, got their chakras here, they're sitting, they're meditating, they're opening their minds, not thinking they're open to the light, the higher light coming down and in and lighting up the centers of your being. It's not as if we're doing it. We're doing things to try and stop being attached, to try and stop thinking, try and stop wanting. Just be still for a moment. You get still for that moment. How divine. We're open to anything. Without conditions, it's like you know, how many of you saw the movies of Ghostbusters? Don't think of anything. Don't think of anything. Just don't think of anything. <laughs> it's too late. <laughs> I thought that was the timeless thing I could possibly think of. No, it's like, whew. No thinking. Being quiet is not talking, not thinking. Can you be quiet for a moment without a thought? So then there's many spiritual disciplines that start coming in. They say in the Kali Yuga that chanting is probably the most clearest way using the name of God to be God. So if you say the name of God, God's there, and who's chanting it, if you say it once, it's there once, if you say it twice, it's there, if you say it a thousand times a day, wow. You have to block out other thoughts for a thousand times. So the chanting was something to try and fight the mind and concentrate your emotions so you're not, attacked, you're not being pulled out and it's a tool to go inward. I chant a lot, so that's, uh, that's my take on it. This is how I came to these things. But here's the, the initiate. Okay, let's go to the next one. So here's the initiate who's sitting. He's in the open, and the rays come forth. Light comes in, and the rays, he sees the seven rays. He sees, he's really, he's not seeing, he's listening, and the energies of the rays are coming through and shedding light on a new way of looking at things whether we should be looking at all. Nope. Yeah, looking. Okay, so this is, again, the same symbol, but it has the uh, esoteric school of, uh, the Northern School of Esoteric Wisdom has the logo in it, which has this alignment of aligning yourself to be still, to be quiet, to be ready, to be open. And that any tools that work to that way like, are useful. Yeah. They can come, they cross all kinds of religions, all kinds of teachings, but there's a lot more 
Well, most of the, you got the chakras, you got the centers, the, the, the theosophical materials really mixes different religions and the cosmologies in a very nice way. And it works for a lot of people. So, but the, here we have we have the yeah. So okay, we'll go to the next one. Yeah. So here I just put the see with the northern schools the, the the initiate is quiet and silent and being receptive. This the other triangle is the energy, the light coming down into the world to try and inspire the world. One is being still to be open. The other is bringing it down. It's the masters are more involved with doing. So it makes this six-pointed star. 